In late 1985, InfoWorld magazine covered rampant rumors of a forthcoming Turbo Mac, which would ditch the pokey 68,000 processor of the original Macintosh and replace it with the very marginally faster 68010. Well, I just so happened to come across this 68010 that's pin compatible with the 68000 and technically should be a drop-in replacement for the original processor in this Mac 128K. And when coupled with the bonkers rare two megabyte RAM and SCSI upgrade, that should give us all the rumored specs of the Turbo Mac and we can explore the Mac that never existed. Actually, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but you clicked on this video. We're in this together now, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking science way too far in the extremely specific area of vintage computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We Frankenstein a lot of computers in exotic and mildly stressful ways, so it's definitely worth sticking around. So this is our freakishly modified Macintosh 128K, the original 1984 Mac, which I found at an estate sale with an extremely rare 2 meg RAM upgrade and SCSI card. You see, as revolutionary as the original Macintosh was, it had a paltry 128K of non-upgradable memory. And the only storage was a 400 kilobyte floppy drive, which led to a painful amount of floppy switching. Hooray! If you want to revisit the sheer joy of cracking this thing open and discovering those upgrades, check out the original video right here. But today, I want to accomplish two things. First, I want to try replacing the original 68000 processor with this 68010, the processor that Apple ignored. Theoretically, it should work. Then, I want to try and install a Rominator from Kiro's Mac Mods. And this thing will allow us to have a bootable system image in ROM. I'm really curious to see if all of these upgrades and accelerators can play nicely together in this ancient machine. So first, let's take some benchmarks of this original processor. Then we'll crack it open, carefully remove the unobtainably rare RAM upgrade and chuck in the 68010. Okay, so we're booted into system 4.3 on here off of our floppy emu to bypass our horribly broken disk drive. And uh, yeah, just look at that. Two megabytes of memory. I can't believe that upgrade is in here. What an improvement over 128 kilobytes. And on here, since we have all this RAM, we're able to run speedometer 2.5, which is a benchmark program and we can take some initial benchmarks of the 68,000. I like all the little animation here. Why don't, they, why don't they still have fun animations in serious computer software? I don't understand it. All right, we're showing our CPU 68,000. It thinks we're a Mac Plus, probably because we have 2048K of RAM. And uh, we're gonna do all of the benchmarks all right, test complete. Let me take a quick screenshot here because you cannot save results in this program. And now we'll just run the straight performance test. All right, test complete. Get a quick screenshot here. And we got a total score of 0.85. Amazing. Wow, 7.8 megahertz is blazing fast. Now, I'm pretty sure that this 68010 will mostly work in this system and even give it a bit of a performance boost. Although I've never heard of anyone trying this upgrade in the Mac 128K, I have read accounts of people installing these things in their Mac Pluses. Those are the upgraded 68000 machines that came out instead of the rumored Turbo Mac. You know, I'm not sure why Apple never actually switched to the 68010. My guess is price. The 68010 is basically a bug fixed 68000, but Apple just 
ignored all the buggy features of that 68,000 and built the Mac OS around it. So there really wasn't that much to gain from switching to the 68010. So now let's right that wrong and make ourselves a super janky Turbo Mac. Definitely have to discharge the CRT because I don't think this thing has a bleeder resistor. Oh, no pop. We're good. And I have to be really careful taking this board out because it's such a tight fit with that accelerator in there. There we go. So here's the motherboard with that incredible upgrade on it. <laughs> and that's all the two megabyte additional memory here. And this works by passing through the 68,000 processor to the original motherboard underneath, which means that this is socketed here and I can just carefully lift this thing out. Get a little plastic spudger in there. Now it's coming. Oh, I got it. Funny, there's a picture of a resistor going across these two points here, but there's no resistor installed. I wonder what that's for. All right, and here is our 6810. And just look at this cool ceramic packaging compared to the plastic 68000. This just looks so much cooler. And uh, I'll just have to make sure we align the notch here. So the notch is on the front of the chip. And it's in. <laughs> Look at that. 68010 in our Macintosh 128K with two megs of memory. <laughs> the Mac that never existed. Okay, now before I plug this thing in and possibly fry an irreplaceable Macintosh upgrade, I'd just like to take a moment to thank all of you who support the channel on Patreon. Without you, I would never be able to make rash purchasing decisions like a completely obsolete and way too expensive processor that I might fry before ever being able to use it, all in the name of science. I'm so glad we can do shenanigans like this together. All right, <laughs> here we go. Chime! Look at that, we have a flashing question mark. This thing boots off of that processor. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, let's floppy emu system 4.3 here with our benchmarks and see if Mac OS actually boots up. <laughs> oh, look, 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 look. 68010. Oh my goodness. All right, speedometer. Let's look at the system. Oh, look at that CPU, 68010 and two megs of RAM. We have a Turbo Mac. All right, let's run some of these benchmarks, all four. All right, test complete. And you know what? We are ever so slightly faster in dry stones, exactly the same on wet stones and uh, pretty much exactly the same on sieve. <laughs> Perfect. We get a quick screenshot of this. And let's run the main benchmark. All right, test complete. And guess what? We scored a CPU score of 1.01. .01, and in our original test with the 68,000, we scored a 1.02. And uh, yeah, that's not really anything. That's negligible. It's just about exactly the same. And I guess that's to be expected because the 68010 is almost identical to the 68,000. It's just fixing a bunch of the bugs that were in there and adding a couple new features. But uh, yeah, it's running at the same exact clock speed and it's, well, performing just about the same. The thing that really matters is it says it right here, 68010 with two megs of memory, the fabled Turbo Mac. All right, now I am really curious about one thing in particular, the calculator issue. Everyone has told me that with the 68010, one of the things that inexplicably doesn't work is the calculator. So <laughs> let's find out if that's true. Go down to calculator. 
Well, all right, it's there. 99 plus 99. Huh. Well, I guess it works for me. <laughs> I guess our Turbo Mac isn't so cursed after all. All right, so let's build the Rominator. And I got this Rominator from my friend in Japan, Kei Koba, famous as a founding member of the Satanic Mac Club. <laughs> And this is really just a circuit board that allows you to put these other fancy ROM chips that uh, Kay has flashed with some pretty cool stuff. I have a system 3.2 and a system 6.0.8. And uh, yeah, these are read-only memory chips which will boot these systems super fast. And to assemble this, I'm using the instructions, of course, but there's also a great video from JDW, one of the most underrated Macintosh YouTubers, definitely check out his channel. He's awesome. So let's have a quick montage of me soldering this thing together. Okay, so here is the nicely assembled Rominator and uh, yeah, it came out great, I think, but there's a big problem and I thought I was going to be able to solve it with some uh, super janky engineering, but alas, uh, it's not going well. So the problem is the Rominator has to go here in these two ROM sockets and of course we're trying to use it in conjunction with our Monster Mac. But yeah, it's way too tall to fit under the Monster Mac and won't let the pins for the CPU pass through connect to the CPU socket. And I tried a whole bunch of different janky things. I tried using some extender cables in the ROM socket and uh, yeah, it looked real nice, but it didn't work. I tried soldering together a different kind of extender. I tried, uh, yeah, just soldering a whole bunch of janky little wires to some sockets that I kept melting and I didn't want to solder to. And uh, yeah, that was super fiddly and just a huge pain for something that, you know, <laughs> I don't want to create a short with this kind of stupid janky engineering and just ruin this thing. I was even thinking maybe I just use this to raise up the memory expansion to, uh, yeah, at least see if it worked. But then I realized that was just a completely stupid idea. And uh, yeah, so then problem number two is I thought, okay, well, we could just test this with the original CPU and put the Rominator in there. <laughs> but guess what? There's a problem with that too. The expansion board has made all of these holes with the metal contacts inside way too loose because the pins on the CPU, they're flat but the pins on the bottom of the expansion board here, those pins are round. So they stretched out this CPU socket here. And uh, yeah, at this point, only this expansion board is going to work in this machine unless we replace this socket here, which uh, that's stupid because I, I want to use this board. So I think what I'm going to have to do is maybe get a bit of breadboard and just create a little breadboard to bring this out back here beyond where this expansion board is. And this is a lot of effort because I don't even know if this is going to work with this because this has its own ROMs which pass through to the original Mac ROMs which are right here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's where we're at. We have a working 6810 in our board here with two megs of RAM. We just don't have the ROM based Mac OS, which uh, I guess we will have to play with in more depth later. Okay, so funny story. I was Googling around trying to figure out what to do next, and I happened upon a several years old thread on 68K MLA. Funny enough, of someone with this exact same problem. They had a Levco Monster Mac and they wanted to put a Rominator in their Mac. Well, they had a 512, but same thing. 
How crazy is that? Same exact setup, same problem with the same super rare Mac 128K upgrade card. I mean, what are the odds? And even better, they created a PCB layout to uh, do exactly what I just said about moving this off to the side. So I think I'm gonna try to print one of those out with PCB way, who else, and see if that can solve the problem. I also necro bumped that thread to ask if it actually worked for them. And uh, hopefully I'll hear back, but you know, <laughs> the threads from like 2018 or something. But I guess that means I'm just gonna leave this mess exactly where it lies. Maybe I'll head out to like Micro Center and pick up a breadboard and try to make my own mock-up of that PCB myself just to test out if it works and then, you know, print it out in a fun color if it does work and yeah, set this off to the side that way. Uh, <laughs> So I'm gonna leave the video off on a cliffhanger here. You'll have to tune in next time where we'll hopefully be able to explore this in depth because there's a lot of cool features of the Rominator and uh, yeah, definitely deserves its own video. Or maybe it doesn't work at all and uh, yeah, forget I said anything. And again, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. I could not do this level of uh, <laughs> infuriating shenanigans without your help and or enabling. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alberto Guier, Camilla Noceda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Ruck K Mods, Ryan and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.